Hey, welcome back to the channel. I have been doing a ton of Chromebook content lately, and one thing that a lot of people have asked me about, and I've been struggling to find for myself, is a way to do like proper video editing on a Chromebook. Now I have a Dell Inspiron Chromebook 14. It's got an i3 processor, 128 gigs of storage, and four gigs of RAM. Now that should be enough to do like basic 1080p editing. Now, a lot of modern Chromebooks have access to Android applications, so I went out to the Play Store and downloaded a bunch of editors, could not find one that I liked, so I knew that I was going to have to go the Linux route. Now there's two main ways to get Linux onto a Chromebook. One is using Christini. Christini is the built-in support for Linux applications within Chrome OS. And the other one is Crouton. Now Crouton lets you install basically a full Linux distribution inside a container that you can run whatever apps you want in there. If you want more information about that, I'll put a couple of videos up here that has more information and shows you how to set those up. But just for the purposes of this video, I did not go the Crouton route because Crouton uh, requires you to put your Chromebook into developer mode, which wipes out your Chromebook and then also makes it a little more vulnerable. So I went with the Christini, which is the built-in support for Linux applications. So the reason I went the Linux route on this Chromebook is because I knew Kden Live was available. And Kden Live is a full featured video editing application. I've been using it for years on my other Linux distributions. It works great and I knew it would accomplish what I was trying to do for this video and for the types of videos that I was gonna edit on my Chromebook. Now, if your Chromebook is supported, it's very easy to turn on this Linux support. You just go into settings, go down to Linux beta, and turn it on. It downloads it, installs it, and you're ready to go. Now, before you install something like a video editor or a game, you also need to turn on GPU acceleration. I have a video on that. I'll put a link right up here if you want to find out how to do that. I'm not going to show you how in this video. You can go check that out and then come back here. It's really easy to do. And once you get that all set up, you're ready to install Kden Live. Now it's super easy to install Kden Live. You just open up the terminal, type in sudo apt install Kden Live, and it'll download it, install it, and you'll be ready to go. Now the only caveat here is that it installs a pretty old version of Kden Live. It installs 16.12.2. They're up to, as of time of this video, up to 19.12.2. So it is a few versions back. Now I tried a bunch of things to get the newer version on there. I tried adding repositories, downloading, a uh, installable file, it's a DEB file, and also using something called an app image. The app image actually worked, but there's an issue with the video, at least on my Chromebook, where when I loaded my videos in and played them back, the uh, preview window would just flash black and then the video, black and video, it just flashed constantly to the point where it was unusable. I spent some time trying to work around that, uh, couldn't find a way around it, so I just bagged it and went with the default version that gets installed. It's a little bit older, but it works fine. So I got to interrupt with an update. I have been editing this video that you've been watching on this Chromebook using that 16.12.2 version. And as the edit gets more uh, in depth, it's just not cutting it. Uh, things are slowing down quite a bit, creating proxy files. The proxy files in this version actually play back worse than the native 1080p uh, H.264 MP4 videos right off my camera, which was really weird, but then I did some research and found that in version 17, they significantly redid the way that they handle proxy files. So I went back to those app images and I started looking through all the different versions and trying out different versions. I've spent a few hours on it now. And the one that I found that works the best that I have been editing this whole video in is version 18.12.1. It's been working fantastically. I can drag those 1080p videos in there and play them back. Uh, no problem, scrubbing through is pretty slow, but that's to be expected on this machine. Now, one thing I did run into is as I'm playing the video, the audio was getting a little bit out of sync. This is just a playback issue when I rendered it out. Uh, that, that wasn't the case, it was just an artifact of playing back. So I did create proxy files with this version for all the video off my camera, and uh, it actually generated those pretty quickly, and they were great. I can scrub through them smoothly, they pay, play back smoothly, I don't have that audio sync issue. So I can set in points and out points, drag my clips down to the timeline, layer clips on top, do color correction, 
do transitions, all the basic stuff that I do in all my YouTube videos, I'm able to do on this Chromebook in Caden Live with the Linux beta support. It's actually been working really well. Now this is actually a pretty decent option for anybody that needs to do basic edits on the go, or if you wanna do like a rough edit and then bring that home and finish the edit on a more powerful machine, it's great for that. You could probably get away with doing 4K as long as you create a uh, you know a good enough proxy file that it's going to play back on this machine. Playing back native 4K, uh, doing it this way, that's just not going to happen. So doing those proxy files, you could probably get away with that. Now, like I said, I tried out a bunch of editors in the App Store, but I'm curious what you're using. Are you using one of those uh, apps from the App Store to edit videos on your Chromebook? If so, let me know which one you're using, or are you using different apps within Linux? Uh, I'd like to know what you're using there too. If you have any questions on anything I went over in this video, or you have more suggestions on something that you want me to get a little more in depth to, uh, leave that in the comments section below as well. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. At least give me a thumbs up or leave a comment. I would really, really appreciate that and hope to see you in the next video.